meetings are so great. This was the third one. And uh, the first one, Nola was at, and so was Catherine. <laughs> and that was then, in Petersburg. Yeah. Yes, in Petersburg it was. And then in Haynes, we had one two years or two years after that. And then this one was in Sitka. And third one, now we're really getting to know all of the farmers and producers and gardeners. And it's been really fun to to laugh and to share and to really learn so much from what everyone does. Farragut Farm, who are the masters of vegetable production. I mean, we've all seen their their produce, right? Yeah. Have you seen Pretty their house? They are, yeah, they live, they live in Farragut Bay outside Petersburg. Oh, okay. And uh, they produce, they're very organized, Bo is very inventive, so he invents a lot of farm tools. Maria is uh, very organized, and uh, they're, they're just really on top of it, and they have a lot of fun doing it, so it's a pleasure to share it with them. Joe Orsi is another person in Juno that he does Orsi produce, and, and uh, he's a retired NOAA scientist, and so again, another organized person. Oh, hi. <laughs> Just you? Um, yeah. <laughs> no babies? Um, I was thinking there was some delay. Mm. Help yourself to this. Um, There's food, food in that hot, hot cold liquids. Just to add something that's not on here is the the uh, farm where I got my potatoes. I have I have seed potatoes later on if anybody wants to buy some. I got some for sale. Yeah. yeah but anyway, Rising It Up Farm um, should be on the list because they have really got a great uh, selection of seed right. potatoes and really good customer that. service. And yeah. he's a, reti a retired dentist and he's got a farm up by Telkeetna, a pretty small farm, but he makes the most beautiful potatoes here. Which I like. it's really nice. That is great. And and heirloom stuff like I've got a lot of height of this time, which is. Great, a great local potato, I super recommend. And it's important, as Peter probably has told you before, to always get your potatoes from Alaska, because you don't want to import any diseases. Or at least not from the tri-states, so the Oregon, Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. Yeah. Uh, they have a lot of disease. Yeah. Viruses. The Gay Creek Ranch, or farm out of Puna, uh, they have amazing apple trees. <clears throat> they have about, I mean, I think it's about 400 pounds of apples from their, I could probably be wrong on that number, but I have it written down somewhere. They have apple trees growing inside a cold frame, like a high tunnel. Plus they plant them, they plant them outside. To make it successful, they plant them on a mound because we have so much moisture here. So it never, the roots never get too wet. And um, he uses Volgars and electric fences to keep the critters away from the apples, but I, he has a lot of information. He grafts and sells his own trees, too. But, and they also sell meat. If you want organic meat, they sell sides of beef. That's in Huna? That's in Huna. Oh, that's cool. Do they um, pick a particular kind of apple variety? Oh, that yeah. Grows? Yeah, they did, they did mention a lot. Um, William, Williams Pride, Geneva, he has cows. They have, oh. yeah. They have berries. Wow. Did they she have tell goats? Sierra, kids start carrying some. She stopped been talking about having meat there, but okay. interesting thing she told me she she got certified to uh, to certify farms as not or certified yeah. organic, but but natural. Yeah. I didn't realize that was a category, yeah. but I guess it's like not as hard to get as the the organic certification, but it's still right. something you know you can kind of market with if you're interested yes. in that. Yes, and sort that, of thing. that is good. That is yeah. good. So well, I'm going to get her down and, and get my potatoes certified as natural. Yeah. There was a Florence Walsh. Does anyone know Florence Walsh from Sitka? Mm -hmm. She's an amazing lady who has a blog called Sitka Boys. I have it on. She's, she's been gardening for, you know, she's, one of, she's like Sylvia Garrity. But she's a Sylvia Garrity of, you know, of Sitka. She's, she has a blog, and she taught me that you can go artichokes here. Really? Which I am very excited about. But wow. I, it should have been started, the seeds should have been started in February, but mm -hmm. I, I just ordered from some. Seeds? From seeds? From seeds. This in your hoop house? Okay. Is that in your hoop house? No, I'm outside. I'm outside. I'm in California. I'm feeling like, really? Yeah, I know. Well, because they like cool, cool 
moist, yeah. foggy. Yeah. Well, we had a roundtable discussion on on vegetables, varieties that grow well and that are flavorful. And also, uh, Caleb and Andrea, who have Middle Island farms in Sitka, and they learned from Joe. He uses a, a ground cloth. It, it brings in the infrared heat, warms the soil, mm -hmm. keeps the weeds mm -hmm. down, and it lasts for about four years. He has a machine that he made where he just slits it, and you can slit it whether you have a crop 12, you know, <coughs> depending on how far apart you want the holes. But, but anyway, um, he doesn't have to weed. He likes it. Um, IRT. They put that, when they plant the garlic in the fall, then they put a lot of mulch over that, seaweed mulch, and it keeps it nice and warm. You know, talk about tools for another minute. Another tool I learned about was a cobra head cultivator. And it's, it's just kind of shaped like this, and it's really good for harvesting garlic quickly without wrecking it. And again, you'll see it in territorial. I really wanted to learn how to grow cucumbers and zucchini from Farragut Farms. They trellis theirs to get mm -hmm. good air circulation, wow. even their zucchini. And mm -hmm. I learned about a, a tool they call Clipper, Q-L-P-R, I think it's called, and I have it on the tool page. And they actually, it's a metal clip with foam in it, and they clip their zucchini to um, a um, rope that they have coming from the, the um, the wire that they have, trolling wire or plastic wire that you have, plastic coated wire that you have going in their high tunnel from side to side. And then they have, I actually bought one, so I learned about this last time from Joe Loise Dorsey from Gardner Supply. You can buy this clip with um, jute on it or rope, and it um, it comes down, and I you put a wooden stake to start, and then they gradually come up. And, and, and they keep the uh, leaves trimmed off the first three feet. And they keep, um, the, and keep the cucumber to a single <coughs> And then they just keep pulling it down so they can harvest it at you know, arm level. And it coils around the bottom, but it keeps growing up this rope. And it has a lot of air around it, so you don't have as many problems. And here's another thing they do, another secret that's very important. They only use part in the carpet, which means they only use cucumbers and and um, and uh, zucchini that that do not need to be pollinated. So I actually came home and ordered a zucchini that they suggested and a um, cucumber because I made the mistake of not getting the part in the coffee. You know, I mean, you know, I have to find it. but I've had really good success with um, mm -hmm. a Russian pickling cucumber okay. from uh, the Foundry folks. Oh, um, yeah. We do trellis, and it's in the mm -hmm. greenhouse. Uh -huh. But, like, I mean, every year now we're, like, planting fewer and fewer plants because it's, like, way Very more cucumbers than we could wow. ever eat yeah. or pick. Like, I have pickles still from 2016. <coughs> Well, like so many. Mm -hmm. and that's wow. good. So these were pickling cucumbers. I mean, I've yeah. been growing Mammy, which is a greenhouse cucumber, as a slicer. Again, it, it grows well in cool climates, mm -hmm. but but I haven't found a good pickler. And they say, okay, so we need to do a group email and, and talk about our own varieties, which do well. There's a different pickler, pickling one that I was growing with them last year, like one one or two plants. <coughs> I think it had been from Territorial Seed Company, but it was also, it had like in the comments, it was like um, adapted for colder climates. So even in the greenhouse, I think like, my greenhouse is passive, so it's not, it's just a mine, shelter, mine you know, mine so too. there's not like, like extra no heat. heat or anything yeah. like, um, so. Yeah, it, it does well and does well even when, and like the season is so long, like we're picking cucumbers into October. That is great. Wow. Yeah. Good. Well, I'd love to, to, to hear if you would share with us or um, your, you know, maybe by email, we could pass it all around, your pickling spice oh. combination. 
Okay. Cause I, I know, I mean, you... Well, that's usually a family <laughs> secret. You might have to torture her. <laughs> yeah, uh, I could never get more... Probably, uh, never the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Some people are really secretive. Like, like Marlene Clark would not tell me her, oh. her pickling uh, recipe. Oh, for. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm happy to share because that's what funny. I tell you now is probably not exactly what right. you <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I can't figure out whether where to buy the individual spices to put together or sometimes those combinations are not... passage kind of greenhouse but he trellis I mean it looked like he had a rock climbing wall. it was like a climbing wall mm -hmm. and you go in there and it was like oh mm -hmm. there were so many cucumbers and zucchini yeah, I have to climb up onto oh, our beds crazy. and it's like still Jeremy yeah. built like a giant so, thing so you need to coil them down let them come down that's their zucchini and mm -hmm. cucumber for me what I wanted to learn this year was cover crops to improve my soil green manure, that sort of thing. I have been trying to rebuild my soil, and they had an amazing person there, Arrow Rotilla. He's, uh, he used to work for Johnny's. He set up their cover crops, and then he worked for Seed of, Seeds of Change when it was a good, viable organization down in New Mexico. He talked a lot about green manures, and he talked about putting planting clovers in with your plants, and and uh, he said, a lot of green manures you can sell, too. Plant fenugreek, it's a 30-day green manure, and you can sell it, too. Um, seed to flowering is 30 days. Um, buckwheat attracts parasitic wasps. If you, you know, plant your buckwheat next to your cabbage and, and you know, anything that caterpillars will be eating. Huh. Because we do have parasitic wasps here. Um, he talked about pea shoots as the great new crop for chefs. I mean, mm -hmm. a, um, a clam shell of flowers is $20 to a chef, but pea shoots themselves, uh, $4.50 a pound wholesale, $9.50 retail, and you just have two nodes on the pea shoots, and you can only get them from knee high to, <coughs> to waist when, when the, it actually snaps. Clear, and that's when they're good to eat. And you can stir fry them, or you can make bulk in your salads and in your salads. So that that was another thing I learned. Um, and when my question was, how when do you know how to mow them under? Mm -hmm. How do you get yeah. rid of rye? He said the way you get rid of rye is let it get to the pollen stage, and then the roots will die. I'm going to write to him. I have another question, but you can, he's very approachable. <laughs> you know, um, here's another thing I wanted to mention too about cover crops. I asked uh, Arrow, and he, I said, gosh, these cover crop things, seeds are so expensive. And he's, and I, you know, where is the source? Where does uh, Johnny get theirs? He said, yeah, I agree with you. I didn't, I, I'll tell you where Johnny got, got their seeds. It's Welter Seed and Honey Company in, <coughs> in Iowa, and he said, I just order right from Welter. And if anyone wants to do a group order, I'm thinking of doing that. I mean, I got a little to hold me over from territorial, but it would be a lot cheaper. And, and then regarding cover crops, um, the latest research says don't mix a whole bunch of seeds, maybe three at the most, like peas, oats. Peas, oats, a batch are really good. Cereal or cereal rye and um, vetch, I think, but I'm going to call them. I haven't done that yet. When you, uh, some, oh. ahead, when you dig your cover crops in, do you then plant something on top of it right away? No, you wait about four or five weeks because we'll the, uh, the microorganisms have to break it down. And what happens is the cycle goes that, you know, you plant your cover crops, they make a lot of nitrogen and then you have things and, and you, um, you cut them down, and then you turn it over if you can, and then the microorganisms eat them, and then all the nutrients go in the microorganisms, 
And then when they die, all of that, all the nutrients are then released swim. for the plants. Just so, the way it goes. So, but then, I guess my, what, something I've always been wondering is like, I mean, are you having to like, this is a bed that you're doing cover crop on that is resting and you're not necessarily, you're just like not going to be planting anything right. until well, we've Well, yeah, done. There, I mean, yeah, John, again, yeah. That area would be covered with right. clover. Well, I do, so I try to do uh, at least two beds. Last year I did two beds that were cover crop the whole season, one after another. And uh, Arrow recommends that, you know, if you're going to do that, let it go to seed, turn it under, then you don't have to buy cover crops for the second time. The seeds will sprout, so he saves money that way. But the, mm -hmm. yes, I mean, I try to have at least one or two reserved to just cover crop the whole mm -hmm. time because my soil really needs improving and that's the best way to improve your soil <coughs> and not have to spend a lot on buying nutrients but and don't, for, don't winter, forget about all our wonderful fucus yeah and, that's true i know i've got so much of that great yeah. resource but, uh, well and what yeah. they said was uh, after you after, in august plant a bunch of plant cover crops for the winter and mm -hmm. leave it on there rather than bare soil and then tarp it over and they talk about silage tarps i've never they're really thick tarps, but they're good to put over. And then you put all your uh, mulch, your fucus, and everything. Well, actually, you put that. Yeah, you put that on top in there and mix too. But tarp it over so that the rain doesn't leach all the nutrients out for the winter. If, if, if you're not, and then yeah. you let it go. You just let it go. And then you, and don't, you don't even turn it under. Oh, just, just let it there like and tarp it. Well, I'll and put, then put some mulch on top just to keep the soil. Warm. I'll put like a foot of uh, that popweed, you know, fucus yeah, on, on yeah. top of it, and um, it pretty much blocks the rain. You know, yeah. especially if you pile it up. Like yeah. like this spring, I, I was digging, you know, r taking it off and and digging into the dirt, and the dirt was just dry as a, you know, really mm -hmm. dry. It just, even though it had been raining, it's just it's a pretty good, pretty yeah, good cover. Yeah, I was wondering about that because yeah. I've seen like a Farragut farm seems to just lump. A bunch of seaweed yeah, over the top. Because they're right stuff. on the beach, it's easier for them to, they, easier for them to yeah, harvest. They do put the tarps there too. Though. Do, uh, do they yeah. use tarps too? That's good huh. to know. Yeah. Um, okay. There was a woman, Janice Chumley, there who just re retired from Ag Extension and she covered integrated pest management. <clears throat> and do you, you know what integrated pest management is? It's basically you can't kill them all. You kind of work for that tolerance level and you're not working with symptoms. You're, you're, um, you know, you're looking at the whole picture and um, and trying to bring in things to affect, the to, to reduce the damage. And one thing I learned from her is that you need these yellow traps. And you can make the yellow traps or you can buy them. And Amazon sells them for about a 20-pack for about um, $15. But you can make them out of yellow cardboard and make a grid and... You can put use STP oil. You can buy fancy tanglefoot. You can, and I think you can probably use a spray adhesive. And what you you hang them on the plants, and then any insect that's going to come, you're going to find that they're Stuck there. On there. Yeah. yeah. That's and so you, you know about it. Yeah. And that's really smart. Yeah. And she said aphids. Yeah, you have good. to keep looking for leaves. She said that they don't even have to be fertile to lay eggs and they will lay eggs and um, they all of these eggs that hatch are pregnant females and in five to seven days they lay more I mean it <laughs> is when you just they don't have they're not fertile but they're laying eggs yeah they can lay eggs and those eggs and those eggs those eggs are female <laughs> and pregnant already when they hatch oh my Yay. god <laughs> That is a takeover right. strategy. Yeah. So, How did that happen? Yeah, so you can't fool around with aphids. You've got to be on top of them, you know? Oh my gosh. And, and this is what I was typing when I... Worse you know, than rabbits. Yeah, yeah, worse than rabbits. And she talked about slugs. She said that, uh, of course, you know, she... And I, I have a sheet on this, that, you know, how do you get rid of... How do you control slugs? And... She has a, a spray of ammonia, spray ammonia and water, and I have that mixture on the sheet. And she just sprays them in the morning, 
you know, or you lay down logs at night or boards and then you pick them up, pick them up in the morning and take the slugs out or it's, you know, it's pretty much, you've got to get them early this time of year because once they um, establish themselves, yeah. their eggs are in the soil. Yeah. And, and and the slug problems? Yeah. <laughs> Holly, do what? you have slug problems at your place? It depends. Like in the really. in the in the greenhouse, fortunately, no, because um, we can control the moisture a bit better, and like I'll find like one or two rogues like randomly. But outside, it just depends on the year. Sometimes they're really bad. Yeah. I mean, we do the best I've been able to do with managing them is like um, making sure that the greenery around the outside of the planter is like. Yeah, like not, not touching like down to the ground as much as possible, and like I scan the ground. Or, yeah, like a little buffer. Yeah. And yeah. That, that was a point that she made: never let your leaves touch the ground. Go yeah. Back before the slugs. Mm -hmm. The best <laughs> planters are the ones that are newer, where we moved, we moved them away from right in front of the house to the side, and Jeremy made like a, a gravel pad. And so, like those, mm -hmm. they get, they last year was like. <coughs> So much fewer slugs. Just that's what I with found. The gravel. That's when she, I was she under sowing gravel, and with, I was under sowing with clover in my garden, thinking I want to fix nitrogen. Yeah. But it seemed like the slugs it's were worse nitrogen. because the clover was under there. Yeah. So then I thought maybe here, you know, in Southeast Alaska, that's not something you can do. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe so. You, so maybe so. Right. I mean, when I under sow with clover in the in the hoop house. Well, I had gravel on all the walkways, so that, and now I have this iron and this black cloth on the... Did, was it okay? Just did the slugs get in there? Um, they them? didn't. Uh, uh -huh. You know, while I patrol. You know, right. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they're, well, they're, they're big. We don't yeah, have those yeah. tiny slugs yeah. yet. Yeah, you guys know about the difference between the brown Aryan and the, and the banana slug? The brown Aryan is those little, little nasty tiny, little black yeah. and brown yeah. ones, and yeah, they're, yeah. they're an introduced species, and they're a terrible pest. Yeah. And if you see them, kill them, just kill them all. But uh, but the banana slugs, they don't really, they're not that big of a pest. And yeah. and they're they're going to get out-competed in town by these. Like, we don't have any brown area on the south end. So. What? Yeah, they're a terrible, they're terrible horrible. pest. They are horrible. Yeah, there's one, that, there's one gardening book that says, like, if you must hate any living creature, hate this slug. Because it's like millions of dollars of uh, oh, damage to the strawberry crop down in Southern Oh, yeah, house, um... Uh, Richard Pettigrew, oh. you like step out of the car and it looks like it rains slugs. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, no. They uh, are everywhere. It's, it's interesting because it's like that spot because when you walk down like to the beach, they're, they're just everywhere. Yeah, like, it's a weird, like a local, local like, they're just population. Oh, so he, nice. needs, he needs ducks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Send him the ducks. Yeah. Well, his yeah. neighbor, um, they have chickens. Chickens. They should be over there. Yeah. Huh. No, but it's interesting because some areas I notice are just overloaded with slugs, and we're we get occasional slugs, but yeah. we're not. Yeah, that's. I have to search. I have to search for one. I have to lift up things to look for them. But his, it was like something just exploded out of the sky and they're everywhere. Uh -huh. Yeah, when I had my garden at Christine Jenkins' place, it was really bad. And then now out at our new property. Not not much, and I kind of like I don't quite know why, except that there was a lot of grasses and stuff in her area. And the grasses. Thinking, just be, were just, be really like careful about bringing in town. dirt from other places. I know I've been yeah. freaking out. Yeah. Like I don't want to bring starts. Like don't bring anywhere. any dirt down the Thomas well, place. <laughs> no. Well, you know I was very so so careful about that, and then Bill brought down some black plants. Black. He managed cloth. to bring down carpenter ants. <laughs> well, he he brought. I don't know, and he brought this black cloth down, and I thought, saw a few slugs last year, you know, the ones that I've been so careful to avoid, but yeah. <laughs> I have a handout which has websites which are pest portals where you can take a picture, and it will tell you what your pest is, um, and all sorts of uh, resources. They had a, another topic is, um, they had a woman from Oregon, and in Oregon and Washington State, they are very proactive in trying to keep farming, small farms operating mm -hmm. against the trend in the, you know, whereas the farms are going bankrupt. And they have, they have internship programs where they bring in kid, people, young people that don't have the money to buy a farm, and they can train with farmers 
And they also connect them with loan sources. And so there's a real good connection and learning opportunity for people in Washington and Oregon for people wow. that want to, cool. to farm. And I typed this up for Peter, pros and cons of loopers. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, well, and, I've, I've worked before. And, it's a uh, great program. I know, it is. I, yeah, I worked, I worked in Hawaii, and I highly it's recommend what, it. What is it's it's called a World, World War Willing, Willing Workers. Oh. Willing Workers on Organic Farms. Worldwide Workers on Organic Farms. Yeah, it's a worldwide network. You can look it on the Internet, and they've got one for every country and every state. And they actually, uh, I sent Maria a map. They've got uh, several in Southeast. There's a couple uh, over in yeah. Prince of Wales. I I'm, I'm picked up a guy, uh, I was driving um, a boat back from Kaufman last year, and I picked up a guy who'd been working on uh, oyster farms over there. He was just hopping from oyster farm to oyster farm. And the, the deal is you go work, you're, you're expected to work like half a day, you know, four or five hours, and then you get two, you know, you get at least one good meal and a place to stay. And like the place I stayed in Hawaii, they just gave me, well, I had a little cabin out back and then um, pretty much uh, kind of basic, food, you know, like rice and, you know, they'd buy a few things. But I, if I wanted anything fancy, I had to buy it. But uh, it's, a, Martin, it's a great deal. What's Karen that? and Martin Hutton just did that in Hawaii oh, that's, oh, uh, close, this winter. Was it, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thing. It was like the furloughs going on and on. Like, Forget it. We're going to... Yeah, no, I, I really, I loved it. Um, I was just working on a three-acre herb farm, and, and they didn't really need somebody around all the time, so I'd go work on the farm for a week and hang out in this great little cabin and nice. eat fresh oranges and a tree right behind the cabin, and then I'd take off for a week and go just paddleboard around the island, you know, and drive Which around. island were you on? The big island. But there's so many over there. And you really got to... You really got to watch it because a lot of them, they're just looking for free labor for bread and, back, bed and breakfast right. or something like that. But huh. but still, it's a good deal if you want to go to Hawaii and you don't have the money to, you know, mm -hmm. stay in a condo and, or something. And a lot of people that are now farmers, like John Mark, <clears throat> John Mark Fortier, that he did that for many years, learning from people. But, and, but the problem is now some people will turn around and sue the uh, owner for Yeah, you got to be careful. It's hard to find anybody right. that people, you know, young people that really know what they're doing sometimes. And right. Well, here's here's a little list of six things put together by the U.S. Department of Labor. Unpaid internship. It says, internship must be similar to what would be offered in an educational environment. Internship is for benefit of intern, not farmer. It does not displace regular employees. Employer doesn't provide an advantage. Intern is not necessarily entitled to a job. Both employer and the intern realize uh, that there is no wage. So if any of those things are not right, then they can they can sue you. And, and this little thing has a capital A apprenticeship, what it should include, what are best practices, and um, you know, one on one time and one on one time and hands on demos, weekly crew meetings. List on whiteboards, farm walks, show what we, you know, just all, you know, basically, <coughs> if you're not um, in it to teach someone what to do and you're only in it to get free labor, you can get sued. Yeah, I heard more, a lot more stories uh, on the other way. The hosts, the hosts tend to be the problems you know, mm -hmm. more than the. Yeah. You know, you just got a lot of weird people living out in the woods. You know, and you probably <laughs> want to check them out before you go. And then, <laughs> yeah, and speaking then, from experience. Well, and, and they, they recommend that you know that uh, you have a contract and and I have. And then you have hand, you talk ahead of no, time. I never had any of that clear. stuff. I just, I just registered. I think yeah. I had to pay fifty bucks to register with a woofer outfit, mm -hmm. and then you know, it was pretty, pretty straightforward. Right. Well, I and I think as they said, the problem is, you know, about midway through the season when everyone's tired, exhausted, overworked, and you know, the production demands, and that's when people can get irritable. Well. The last day I went to a um, workshop, a Cornell workshop on food safety. There's a new law in the U.S. and we as small growers are exempt, so we don't have to do it, but they lay out how to have a safe crop and what you should be doing and, and it's all in that, that book. I'm thinking this book here, the, the person gave me to give to Sierra and I asked Sierra and she said, oh, I have the one that Catherine gave me. And this has the same information in it a lot. 
and I'm going to give this to the library. Hopefully they'll take it. Great. Yeah. And so we can just check it out and look through it. And if anyone wants to look through this food safety book and get some <coughs> <laughs> one of the researchers, one of the main guys from Fungi Perfecta I was there. Oh, oh wow, and really? And he did a very interesting oh, presentation. Wow. He had a great yeah, slideshow, which unfortunately he didn't send, and they showed us all the workings of the, you know, how they go about doing things. And he said, if you have purchased from them before and inoculated the log like Peter has, he said that um, there are lots of things that, that whether or not it will work. Yeah, I got, I, got I got some chicken in the woods plugs. You get these little wooden plugs and you just drill a hole in, a, in wherever you want to inoculate and you just pop it in there. And I got some chicken in the woods uh, spore plugs and popped them in there and mm -hmm. forgot about it and like three or four years later, boom. Yeah. And that was out of a big cedar log mm -hmm. too. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty And, and they, uh, they said the sawdust works better if you want, you know, if you don't have mm -hmm. success, sawdust, it's easier. But mm -hmm. this is a really good slideshow if you source for mycorrhiza, mycorrhiza and mycorrhiza. are, um, you know, you probably, you know about <coughs> fungi and there are different kinds, but the kind that help many mycorrhiza, except for the brassicas, they don't like mycorrhiza, but they will help the plants, they have a symbiotic relationship with the plant, they actually penetrate into the plant's wall, cell wall, and they eat sugars from the plants, and in return, they break down all the minerals and nutrients in the soil and make them available, especially phosphorus. And if you over-fertilize your garden, you will not have mycorrhiza, especially phosphorus. I think it's more than 50 parts per million, hmm. because there's no need for them, and you know they won't. there's nothing for them to do. But if you, in a green cover crop, if you plant oats and peas and fish together, the oats will take up all the nitrogen, which then makes it um, more than the mycorrhiza have more, or nitrogen or phosphorus or something. The mycorrhiza will work more, but you don't want to over fertilize your garden because then it's not a good habitat for mycorrhiza. And it's very tricky. Each, you know, we have mycorrhiza here in the coniferous forest and for alders and even for blueberries. There are KCA have a different kind the blueberry family has a different kind of mycorrhiza. And it's very, and you can, um, there's a site <coughs> online where it shows you how to inoculate, you know, get it from the soil, but it's really hard to get the right mycorrhiza. One year, about four years ago, I bought some and I had green beans growing out here. And oh my gosh, I, they were just totally surrounding the, the, the roots and they, the beans were just amazing. But but um, you have to find a good source. This is a good source. And what they usually do is they just put a combination in, and maybe one of those mycorrhiza in the combo will be what you're wanting, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, they're, fungi perfecti, they're, they're good, a good source for that. And um, yeah, the mycorrhiza, that's what you, have you ever seen them on the roots? They're, uh, it looks kind of, uh, this growth, if you pick up and some like feather. a little crystally growth, kind of. Yeah, yeah, sort of a feathery kind of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There were three people presenting on composting. Oh. One of them was the tribe in Petersburg that bought this huge, gigantic metal thing, mm -hmm. and they harvest fish waste from the cannery that would normally be going into the sea, mm -hmm. and affecting the oxygen level and polluting the ocean, and it's it's huge. And then. They sell the compost. And another person was a local, she does, she, it's an entrepreneur, she lives in Gustavus, and she collects compost in Juneau. She is so neat, and yeah. she really, um, it's very exciting. I mean, people put a five gallon bucket on the, on, on the curb, and you get a discount if your neighbors <coughs> combine, and you, she has only one pickup, or she has another rate for commercial businesses. And she picks it up, and she has this big, you know, those those big uh, farm bureaus sells those like high tunnels or farm equipment or mm -hmm. boats or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. She has one of those, and she has it all in there. And she she um, 
She has a website too, and yeah. she's trying to get like other people involved with this information on it and stuff. Yeah. She, she has a big bin, resource. and then how does she turn it? Is it she, she's she talking about volumes, a, she, right? No, she does it mechanically. Oh. She has a big, uh, she has a little Kubota type. Oh, okay. And she turns it three times, and you have to get it up to 130 degrees for about three days to get rid of the pathogens. And that's another thing that the uh, the uh, food safety person told me. Uh, you know, I thought, oh, you don't really need to turn it. Yes, you need to turn it to get aerated, and you need to check it to get it up to at least 130. And I'm having problems with my, I don't, I don't have the right carbon nitrogen ratio i just don't get it cooking like you my, do. my seaweed and i just did just i've never tried this before i only did just seaweed this year and i filled it up like like six feet like tall. yeah and it got to 120 degrees and it beat it that for days now that was just the center mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i'm not turning it you know uh -huh. um what my plan was is i'd love to just let it sit for another year and mm -hmm. break down but i'm actually going to probably just use my rotted seaweed on my garden because i need you know nutrients yeah. but um yeah. i think it was just the, maybe just the mass amount yeah, yeah. i think the bigger, the bigger the pile because the, how much how much do you compost when you compost how what how much like do you, the size of this living room just but, about but, you know, and is it really deep is it yeah like, no i it's like four four have you ever used like peter a compost turns thermometer it, peter turns it all the time and oh you do yeah it's like a daily thing down. i go down and I, I try oh, to turn it every okay. day. Yeah, yeah just by hand. Yeah. Pile, we don't turn it, but like we'll, like Jeremy will, we'll get grass clippings from Sean Curley on occasion. And what oh, the oh, second man. you put those on, it's like, poof. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. so that's hot. And do you let it sit for like a year then or something like yeah, that? Yeah, we, we always have a pile that we're not touching and right. a pile that we're like, and it's just like, for and when you and get other, into that to one, it. that is it like dirt then at that point? Oh, almost, yeah. yeah. Like Jeremy just started sifting through the one we're gonna apply to our gardens this year, um, and uh, man, we have seaweed. There's just like tiny little bits of seaweed here right. that are still, but it's kind but of, but it's pretty sweet. much, it's just beautiful. If you wow. put that, if you cool. put that on top, it'll compost down really fast. Yeah. Right. Just don't bury. Worms, if you bury it, you know it's gonna yeah, take longer. So okay. Nice. You only down. got through the top four inch layer of everything because the rest oh, of it's still nice. frozen. Oh, that yeah. 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 layer of worms you get, it's so yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. You get you big fat so That's, that's my favorite part about gardening, really, is making dirt. That? Yeah. That's, that's what it's all it's about. It's so really. cool. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, something I learned about manure, uh, because I've been using chicken manure, too, and the, you know, the fair lady said, only you have to apply it three months before you harvest, yeah. pre-plant, but you don't want the manure on any greens or anything like that. What about making a tea out of it? Well, she said, yeah, she said the no. tea had, can have pathogens and, yeah, as I uh, said, she's a pure lady. Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, it's all, yeah. Well, you gotta be careful. I mean, if you're gonna yeah. sell it or give it to other yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. right, of everything. And I have, you know, field operations. I, I say what I do to my plants every day. I make records of what nutrients I add and when. Pretty much like need to make, Keep record of like when did you plant roughly how much of everything you're harvesting through the season and if you amend what are you amending with and how much do you use and um, and it really does make a difference especially as you get older and forgetful mm -hmm. so is that you got you got a hard time with that, that grass <laughs> yeah. yeah i, 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 I did a yeah. dome they actually oh, nice. so oh, for you. the state of alaska they're really oh, lenient yeah. with their um oh, nice. with what they call call a high tunnel oh, okay. um so we actually <laughs> built a, a geodesic dome really? yeah. is it really good or uh, as a kit it it's a kit it's specifically from a company yeah. in alaska oh, nice. um arctic yeah. dome yeah. greenhouses hmm. and um, do you like it we love it yeah, yeah we have really our beds are really i would say deeper than they need to be we built them like which I think is good. It's nice. Is good. It's a lot, it's a lot easier on your you back. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so nice on your back. Yeah. Um, but I it's also tricky to figure out watering, to be honest. Um, I think that's been the one of the biggest challenges. Like I think we finally figured it out last year, like watering and timing and how much it was holding in the bottom of that column of yes. those beds yes. versus like mm -hmm. so but yeah, you, it's great. You guys are watering from your um yep. Your collected water, right. your catchment. Uh, 
A little bit of both, it just kind of depends. We, we do have a water pump now from our stream. Um, so sometimes when our catchment is low, like last summer, there were periods where it was getting really low and we were pumping straight from the stream into the greenhouse. Okay. Um, and, and then we had a combination. We have like the soaker hoses um, for the perimeter beds, but then we have like a big bed that's right in the middle uh, that we water by hand. And were you able to run your so soaker hoses off the pressure from the stream? Does it just, does it work pretty good that, that way? That pump from the pump. Oh, okay, from the pump. Okay, yeah. right. Got yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And, um, is that program still going, you know? The it, is. Program? Yeah, it is. It is yeah. still going. Oh, okay. like, they come yeah. every year and they're always eager to oh. like, get Something, more people. And what there. Maria oh. didn't quite mention is that, so um, you front the initial, I mean, because we're not talking too much detail until now. Um, no. You front the bill initially yourself. It has to be a kit. You can't just like design your own and do your own. Like It has to be through like an approved kit <clears> uh, by them. But like I said a minute ago, they're very flexible with what they approve. Um, and you front the money yourself, uh, and then they'll pay you back up to a certain amount, depending on like your personal demographics, among other things. Right. Like whether you're, whether like you're a, a veteran, veteran community, too. You get, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, you get yeah. more if you're a veteran. Oh. Yep. Yeah. I mean, at ours is pretty much. So it's like per square foot itself. how much oh, they pay you. Sense. I mean, yeah. we had to pay some, but Our, it pretty much paid for itself for yeah. us too. I mean, mm -hmm. we think we definitely we got a lot of like the second lumber from Mike Allen to build all our beds, which was a huge savings. And then, um, then so with the nutrient management, like right now, I would be so sampling mm -hmm. my soil yeah, you could do that in your and sending it to them while I'm like start making all my stars, but not making the greenhouse yet. So we're really putting. I'd have to have it on a joint lot and pay that two hundred forty a month. So. Well, I'd have to get serious about it. You could sell a couple hundred bucks one. That would be a good retirement program strategy or something. Like. Well, we kind of have you, side you know, conversations like going. Yeah, yeah, right. We have to make yeah. one person. Um, yeah. Like, oh, Mario, Mario has been handling the grants. And so working with Mario, there's a group, <clears throat> about eight or nine people that work together to put on the Sitka conference. And a lot of it was through the organization. Southeast Alaska Water Chips. Yeah, them and Salt and Soil Marketplace. They oh, yeah. Does everyone know Salt and Soil Marketplace? Mm -hmm. The Ag Department, Ag Extension. They, they would like to have another conference, and choices of sites are Juno, Wrangell, or Ketchikan. And so Wrangell! It's our turn. <laughs> and here's one yeah. of the problems that maybe you guys have some ideas on. The funding that they've had these last three times is no longer there. So they need mm -hmm. to procure funding. So if you know of any grant agencies that might be good to, that might have something like that. The Walker Foundation. Oh, That's true. Yeah. 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 Security. Yeah. There you yeah. go. I wonder about like the tribal organization. We just did that whole round of grants last year with, with the only theme being like healthy living. It could, it could be your own conference, right? Sorry. Yeah, regional. it's regional. regional. All through Southeast. Of funding. Yeah. So it's probably kind of yeah. Yeah. How much did they do yeah, with that? Yeah. Search, um, did they do anything with the one in Sitka to sort of help out? Or? Um, no, I don't think so. The Nolan Center would maybe be able to um, like come up with path. like a deal. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you know they do like a lot of free stuff for nonprofits or if it's mm -hmm. educational and that kind of thing. How many people are we? Well, we had 95 to 110 this, uh, this past time. Well, including they, the Trident bunk houses in the early time, because I know that those. Well, that's true because it would be in February. Well, yeah. Isn't the Stikine building a conference in there? But what's the time? Does anyone know roughly a timeline that they're know. planning? Or no, we don't. You know, in Sitka, groups like the Sitka Conservation Society did dinner one night. The high school band did lunch one day, mm -hmm. and you know, local groups would would cater. How long was the conference? Friday, Friday um, afternoon to Sunday afternoon. Okay. So weekend. So so that sounds exciting. People are interested then, and maybe we can, if you're interested in helping, if it got, gets to that point where mm -hmm. Wrangell is mm -hmm. chosen. But here's another thing about Farragut Farm. I asked Bo and Maria, 
are so wonderful. You guys have to meet them. They are just amazing. And I said, would, would we be able to visit this summer? Just go out for the day. And, um, and so I'm wondering, I asked Peter if maybe he'd talk to Eric and see if we could see what I, rates would do. I was already planning a visit this summer. If I was thinking, you know, summertime's their busiest time of year. Yeah. They're farming, all that. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if they wouldn't well, take a day. They well, they said jazzed. we could come. The, group come the, the thing yeah. is, you know, they live up this channel, and you have to come on a big incoming tide, right, and you yeah. only have a few hours there, and then you have to get out before it's dry. That's yeah, I should. I'll talk to Eric, but I could probably get a trip, get him, a, give us a discount. Because you know. you're driving for because yeah, I'm going to be driving for Eric. I mean, so. he he ha he has some fast boats. We could go over there on an incoming tide sometimes. So who all's interested in that? I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm, okay, yeah. so how many okay, so Dan. Everybody here, here. bring an extra. <laughs> all present. Everybody here is interested. Can we all get on a boat? Uh, yeah. Like you take uh, on the the, his big boats, you can take twenty or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah take this the, I, the Ocean Pro. And I think Jen Miller might want to go too because she's heading the garden program. Yeah, we could stop at Petersburg oh, yeah. for lunch. It'll it'll be a great time. Yeah, there may have been some folks here that should should have been here today. We weren't thinking about until last minute, or mm -hmm. we didn't contact because I know you had mentioned some folks. Um, yeah. Kim Wickman would probably. She oh, would be, Kim yeah. Whitman she would. would. Love it. So totally Jen Miller, her. teacher, right? And people, yeah, and people and ask about Kim. Kim. And Jill Kim Privet Whitman. helps a lot with the school. Oh, okay. Jillian, Jillian Privet, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So maybe okay. we could um, try yeah. to get Definitely whatever. Any of those cool. Yeah. If there, I mean, it would be really That'd cool be if there's trip. like a, a kid, like a. a find some out about Eric and going to Farragut. We'll yes. see if we can find some possible grant possibilities yes. and we'll keep in touch yeah. with Maria and anyone that wants to. And we'll to. just email everybody. And it is so nice to talk about gardening. If you ever want to uh, get together every few months and maybe have well, a that's what I was coffee. Thinking. I would like to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe we could even right. try. I mean, I know I'm so busy yeah. and everything. Even quarterly, quick. you know, or something. Maybe May. May, May seems practical. Actually, yeah. I was thinking May would be a, probably the best time to go to Farragut. I mean, oh. they might not have too many too many vegetables yet, but they'll but have they greens. Right. And, but just as far as because um, yeah, it gets really busy, nuts. the rest of the summer is just yeah. really busy, and it'd be easier yeah. for. So Eric maybe to, our you know, our next us. thing would be the Farragut farm yeah, thing. Yeah, that would be yeah. nice. 